What's it like to see through my eyes? I'm James. I was born with ocular albinism. To sum it up, I have a lack of pigment in the skin and the eyes. Albinism can also be the root of another condition I have called nystagmus. Nystagmus is the rapid, involuntary movement within my eyes. I have no control over how they sway back and forth. Nystagmus is also often the comparative vertigo, which is the feeling that the world around you is constantly in motion, whether it's spinning or shaking. It's kind of like the illusion that a massive earthquake is just kind of taking place right in front of you. The difference between nystagmus and vertigo is that nystagmus never stops. This is how I've seen the world for the last 20 years, as of today, November 17th, my 20th birthday. A question that I'm asked quite often is, why don't you just wear glasses or contacts? Every time I seem to respond with the same answer. My vision is uncorrectable. Glasses may enlarge the world around me slightly, but it will not fill in that pigment that's lacking in my eyes or stop my eyes from dancing. Nystagmus is very different amongst every individual who has it. People with nystagmus often experience different levels of blurriness and shakiness throughout the day, depending on stress level, tiredness, or excitement. Working out is visually demanding on my eyes. Oftentimes when I'm running, my eyes will speed up and constantly get blurrier and blurrier to the point where it's just unbearable to even open up my eyes. Growing up, I so badly wanted to drive. In middle school, I, I strive to find ways to just make it possible for me to see or, or get, have the same advantage as everyone else visually in order to one day be able to drive. Eventually in high school, a lot of my classmates had to take driver's ed as a required course and school administration exempted me from taking even the driver's ed just written course because for obvious reasons. I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty depressed about that for a little bit and eventually I just had to accept the reality that I'll never drive. I wasn't born with any sort of mental illness, but because of the vision, uh, I dealt with a lot of bullying and from a lot of ignorant kids who were just very close-minded and didn't understand what I was personally enduring uh, my entire life. And because of that, just their responses, I, I developed a few mental illnesses like depression, anxiety, and I was even suicidal for a while. And that really did a number on me mentally because I really just, I felt worthless. I didn't feel like because of this vision I have, I won't be able to do much in my life, but I, I've tried to make it a goal now um, by overcoming my mental illnesses, and even overcoming my vision to do as much as I can visually uh, independently. And I try to do as much as I can by myself in order to just kind of keep a very positive outlook on my visual impairment. It's always been a struggle to fall asleep at night because even though my eyelids are shut, I can still feel my eyes pounding horizontally. They never stop, even if I'm trying to rest my eyes. I independently moved to Los Angeles last summer at the age of 19 for three reasons. I had to leave the suburbs to find somewhat reliable transportation. I find comfort in feeling as independent as possible, no matter how much my disability tries to hold me back. Lastly, I'm passionate about filmmaking. As a legally blind cinematographer, I feel like I have this unique appreciation for the viewfinder, being able to capture details that I had only dreamed of seeing. When I'm looking off at a sunset, there's a real difference between me drawing in the details in my head mentally and truly being able to capture it.
This is what it's like to see through my eyes.